Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at OptionAlpha.com and welcome to the first video in the Thinkorswim course here officially to help you guys get started and just get a little bit of a lay of the land here with how the platform is laid out. So first thing I wanna do here is just load up the platform, show you guys how we load it up because there's a couple things you can actually do on load up uh, when you actually load up the desktop version. And just for full disclosure, what I'm gonna be doing throughout this course is the first couple videos here, I'm gonna be laying out the course or laying out the, the um, setup in a paper trading environment so that you can see how we do that. And then I will switch over to my regular trading platform, um, which is gonna be the same layout that we set up in paper trading, but I wanna be able to show you how the paper trading works as well, just to get started. Uh, but then most of the videos that we'll do towards the end are gonna be on my real platform at the time of whenever I do this recording, uh, as far as the different um, trades that we do and fills and stuff like that. So we'll try to do as much of this as possible. As always, if you guys find this helpful, please help share it online for us, help spread the word about what we're trying to do here at Option Alpha. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do here is actually just load up the platform. So um, I have the platform loaded just in the bottom hand, right hand corner of the screen. You can see now the thinkorswim icon is loading up here uh, for the desktop version. It doesn't really matter if you're a Mac or a PC user at this point, it's mostly the same stuff, but it'll always install some updates as it's loading up and may take a little bit of time here. So once you have this up here, you obviously can type in your name or your password. There's a choice here to do live trading or paper trading. And really that's as simple as toggling it on and off. Now most of the time, like 99% of the time, we do live trading, but you can also set it up as paper and switch back and forth between accounts. What people fail to realize is that there's this little gear icon here in the bottom right or bottom left. And this is allowing you to set up the color scheme right off the front, uh, right off the bat here with Thinkorswim. What most of the default color scheme is, is dark. This is, it gets that black, dark uh, background that you see. I actually prefer the light. Uh, there's an old school version, a high contrast, etc. Font size, you can do small, medium, very large, etc. And then you can reset any of the memory stuff in here. I don't do any of that. I just really just change that color scheme to uh, light. So I wanna make sure I have the light color scheme. So once you have your information in and you start typing it in, obviously the platform will load up. Again, this is gonna be loading up a brand new paper trading platform for us. I basically cleared all of the settings in paper trading so that I can load this up totally brand new for you guys as part of this course, okay? So when you first get into the Thinkorswim platform, there's a couple things that you'll have to realize or a couple things that you'll see as part of this, this whole setup. Uh, you'll see this first like dialog box that they have in there. That's very easy. Just go ahead and cancel it. I really don't even pay attention to it that much. Um, but as far as, as all the trading stuff goes, and let me just go to the new margin account that I just kind of reset for everything. So as far as the trading goes, you're gonna have a couple different areas, and this is what I wanna just at least get through in this video. The top left-hand section of the platform is gonna be your account information. So things like your buying power for options, buying power for Forex, your net liquidity and day trades available, and your cash and sweep. Now the really the two most important things here are gonna be your net liquidity and day trades available, which really shows you how much money is in your account. So if you were to liquidate everything in your account, how much money is in the account. Your cash and sweep vehicle is basically how much cash you have available to trade. So cash that isn't either tied up in stocks or options or tied up in actual margin covering some trades, okay? So I always take a look at my cash and net liquidity uh, to know exactly where we stand as far as how much money is in the account to trade, and then what's the total value of the account itself. On the left-hand side here, uh, what you're gonna see is a bunch of different widgets. Uh, these can be added, removed, deleted, etc. cetera. Uh, things like your watch list, quick note or quick uh, quotes, live news. There's a bunch of different ones that you have in here. So you can see if I switch gadget here, there's a scratch pad and Trader TV. And I think there's MSN eventually in here, calculator, currency map. I mean, all kinds of different things in here. Uh, as far as what we do, we just usually have a watch list or live news kind of streaming. Again, these are very easy to delete. You can just go ahead and delete one of these. You can move these around. It doesn't really take uh, too much effort as far as you know putting this stuff together. Okay, and so we'll go through the watch list in later videos, but at least you know how that kind of works. 
As far as the other layouts go, the front page that you'll see here is the monitor tab and then the activity and position statement. And this is where all of your trades will really live. So as soon as you start making trades, they'll start to populate in here under your position statement. We'll have another video on this later in the course about how you can kind of set this up and organize this. So it'll be really easy to manage and, and read. But this is where all the positions will actually go. Your activity up in the top section here, this is all of the activity for today. So any working orders that you have, any orders that were filled or actual trades made, canceled orders, so something you might have canceled and repriced or redone, and then rolling strategies. So if you have anything that you're trying to roll or adjust, those might also fall into that category. So this is a really good way just to, again, see what's going on in your account as far as all the positions. You'll have a lot of different information on the different positions as we get further along. The next tab over is your account statement. This is going to be where you kind of keep all your records for everything. Now the default is always one day back, but you can go back and change this to as many days back as you want or do a timeline from X day to X day. Whatever the case is, you can filter it by symbol that you're looking at. Again, what you're going to be doing in here is basically looking at all of the different uh, transactions in here. And so again, you can filter by trades, deposits, withdrawals, dividends, etc. Right. And so again, this is just a paper account. So it's just, you know, kind of chronologically showing everything happening. We just reset the paper account but from 128 down to 100. And then you have your Forex, right? So if you have any Forex cash stuff in here, that'll be in there. You have your order history, so any orders that you placed, and then trade history. Now trade history is different from order history. Order history will show you orders that went in and also got canceled. Trade history shows you exactly what things were actually traded. So I traded X, I traded Y, whatever the case is, okay? And then the next tab down or row down is your profit and loss. Now this is cool because you can also do it by symbol, by position group, or just an overall reading. And so again, if you do this, you wanna just make sure you're looking at the right number of days back just to get an idea of your overall profit and loss. The last two things here, or the last really one important one here is your account summary. Now this is where it also shows any year-to-day commissions that you paid and fees, and also again, another recap of your net liquidation value, and then buying power for both stocks and options. So you can see how much money you have available to spend. There's also another Forex account statement. If you do trade Forex, it's in there. The strategy roller, we don't actually use that much. That is in there. That's just giving you an idea of if there's any rolling positions or strategies. Those will be in there and kind of showing up. Again, I do not use them a lot. There's you know probably a lot of tabs inside of Thinkorswim that you guys will find out that we just don't use too often. The next tab over is the trade tab. Again, we're going to have many videos on this. I'm just trying to give you the layout of, of the different sections here. So inside of the trade tab, you have all products. This is basically where you can type in a ticker symbol and trade anything as far as stocks or options. You have Forex here. You have futures. Uh, there's an active trading and a pairs trading uh, tab in here. Those are really for more of your your day trading type uh, people out there. So we don't use those. We don't even really use the futures of the Forex. We spend most of our time right inside here in all products. Again, this gives us the ability to trade not only the underlying stock, but also the different options with uh, from within that. So again, the whole idea here is the trade tab and then all products is mainly where we live. Again, we'll have a full tutorial and video on this as we get further along. The Analyze tab is really cool. This is actually where I spend a lot of my time um, myself and my portfolio, as you'll see in later videos. It's really broken down into a couple sections. Uh, the first one is adding simulated trades. So this is where you can actually trade stuff in simulation before you actually do it live. It's very similar to paper trading. You can also do this in a live account where you add simulated trades, but you don't actually execute a real trade. And then you have your risk profile. This is a great way to beta weight your entire position and portfolio to a benchmark index to really look at how positions are structured as far as the payoff diagram, et cetera. So we'll take a look at that in some of these other trainings. You have the probability analysis. This is really cool because it shows you kind of projections and probability ranges for different indexes and ETFs. Uh, so again, we'll have another training on this, but it's a really useful little tool. You know, the next one over is economic data. This is a fairly new addition to the Thinkorswim platform. It has all of the economic data right inside the platform. So all you want to do is just click on something and then you can see kind of all the information on you know non-farm payrolls and what they've been and how they've grown or not, right? So this is a really cool way to you know take a look at all this information and to basically have all of this economic and you know fundamental data at your fingertips, you know, as much as you want. 
Think Back is a fairly new uh, recent development. I, I would say it's been updated a couple times, but it gives you the ability to go back in time and then paper trade. I got to tell you guys, honestly, it's not something that I use often. I don't think that it's actually that great. It has limited capabilities as far as strike prices, timelines, pricing, etc. cetera. Uh, so it's not something that I use in options trading. We use our backtesting software much more so than that. Um, and it doesn't have really the ability to test multiple strategies over time. You have to manually type things in. Um, again, it's still a feature there. Some people do like to use it. I'm going to be honest with you guys, we don't. And then the fundamentals. The fundamentals is a really cool way to, uh, again, pull up any stock that you want to look at. Say NNN is a read stock, and you can see what research teams are saying about it, buy, hold, etc., outperform or not. Has the company profile in here. You can keep scrolling down. Has all the numbers inside of the actual platform here as far as uh, earnings per share and dividend and return on equity, the whole deal. Now, this is really powerful stuff, and I, I don't know if you guys understand how powerful some of this information is to have right inside a platform, literally at the fingertips of a keystroke, uh, but it's really, really powerful stuff. Now, again, I don't look at any of the stuff when making trades. Our duration and our trading timeline is so short, 30 to 45 days, that it really doesn't matter about any of this stuff, right? Um, so it is in here. It is something that you can use and leverage if you're more of a buy and hold long-term investor, um, but it's definitely something that, uh, that I think is you know useful if you're in that department, not so much if you're actually trading options. The next major tab over here is the scan tab. The scan tab has a couple different things. You can scan by different stocks. You can scan for options. You can scan for spreads. And then it has some other spread books in here, some other abilities and capabilities to scan. Again, we'll go over this in another detailed tutorial, but for right now, I just want to let you know that there is the ability to kind of filter and scan for different things. You can add studies on fundamental filters, on technical filters. It's actually a very powerful system for kind of finding trades um, and then potentially start to dig in and do some research beyond that. The next tab over here is called the Market Watch tab. This is where you can actually have another list of quotes if you want to, so something else different than your watch list. You can kind of pull in here if you're just watching the market. You can also set up reoccurring alerts for different stocks, so alerts if stocks hit a certain price target or if a certain technical uh, element was breached. You can also visualize a lot of the public market. This is something that we often see maybe on CNBC or other websites where you do a visualization and a heat map of the different securities. You can do also an index watch and kind of watch how many different securities are declining or advancing that day, et cetera. Financing rates is really uh, more of a Forex thing. It's about rollover rates in Forex, so not something that we typically deal with a lot with options, but it is in there. The calendar is actually a very cool feature. Uh, the calendar is very cool because not only can you filter by individual stocks, so again, you can type in like NNN and figure out exactly when they're going to do anything in a given month or week. Um, and let me just go to a month cycle here so you can see. But then you can uh, obviously scroll through the different months and see if they have anything reporting in the future or whatever the case is. I'm not actually sure why. There we go. There it is. So you can see when they report earnings or if they have a conference call, etc. Um, one of the ways that we use the calendar just really quickly is we filter for earnings. So this is a great way if you don't have our earnings software and uh, calendar on the website and you haven't purchased access to it. You can also get it through here. This is everything that has earnings. So they're not filtered out by liquidity and volume, but you can see everything that has earnings on a given day. And just by clicking on the date, you can see exactly when they announce um, what their EPS is, if they've added it to the, to the calendar or if it's publicly available yet. Um, all that information is kind of in here for you guys. The next tab over is the charts tab. The charts tab is a really cool tab. We mainly use just charts charts. So under the charts, we use the main charts tab. We'll be setting this up again in another video here in a little bit, but the whole idea here is that this is giving you the ability just to type in a ticker symbol and pull up some data and a chart on that. From here, we can do a lot of things like add different technical studies, add drawing tools, add different indicators, remove or add volume, change projection brand bands, change probability cones. There's so much we can do to the charts tab. Uh, it needs its own video tutorial naturally so that we can get everything in here. The profit uh, chart is uh, original Thinkorswim component. Profit was originally uh, one of the parts and components of Thinkorswim originally back in 2007, 2008. Uh, it's just another charting software. It's a little bit different. 
I think it's a little bit more sluggish than the actual charts itself. Uh, something I used to use before, but now I just use the actual charts. You can see it's actually taking a while to load up here, uh, but it's got very similar capabilities. It's just that we use the actual charts feature um, a little bit more on Thinkorswim. A flexible grid gives you the ability to do multiple charts um, in one look. So you can look at say SPY, and then you can look at uh, DIA, and you can look at the cues all in one single chart, right? So we don't use it that often. It's just not something that we do. We don't feel like we need to use, you know, 10 different charts and day trade all this stuff. Um, but again, it is in here so you can take a look at it. Uh, product depth is something that's fairly new to Thinkorswim in the last couple of years. It gives you the ability to look at uh, implied volatility skew in both puts and calls. Uh, also, the ability to look at any futures if you want to on different contract months. So a lot of capabilities in here for sure. Again, not something that we generally look at too much. Most of the stuff you can kind of find information on from the trade tab itself, uh, but it is a good feature in here if you want to dive into it. The last one here is tools. And I've got to be honest with you guys, we don't use too many tools. There's a couple services that they have like MyTrade and Trader Feeds and Think Logs and videos, etc. Not stuff that we really use. So look, I mean, the toolbar is there. You can take a look at it. Uh, but again, it's really kind of useless. The last one here is the uh, help desk, the contact center, uh, any disclosures. What we usually use for help if we need something on the platform is just the support or chat icon up here. So once you do that, you can create a support ticket and start to, uh, talking with any of the different departments at Thinkorswim. That's usually the best way to go about it um, and that we found the best, uh, the best use of it. We do not use the chat room. We find that there's way too much noise and garbage in there, um, just not something that we do, nor do we have time for. You can also adjust some of your audio stuff. There's also lists of seminars that they have coming up. Um, so a lot of stuff in here that you guys can use if you want to. The last thing that we're going to talk about here and just kind of the platform overview is this main setup uh, icon in the top right hand side. So once you do this and you click on application settings, which I think it may have been cut off just a little bit, this is where you have all of your general settings for order. So your account, like which account you want to display, what currency, etc. You have order settings. So if you just want to do single orders and show expected price, if you want to do like auto click and uh, send orders, etc. Uh, positions, how you want your layouts to be shown, uh, how you want uh, instruments to be grouped by trade, by style, by ticker, when you want things to be marked before expiration. Um, other things like activity for active traders, how quickly you want quotes, if you want them fast, real time, no delay or slow, etc. The startup, if you want it in the last state of the application or if you want it to always go back to the default. Some more of the look in the feel, the font size, the spacing, etc. It's all in here. Some of the display stuff on uh, decimals for Greeks. I mean, there's just so much in here that you guys can look at as far as just general setup. In notifications, this is a good one um, that I do often get uh, fill out and make sure that we get. Um, I prefer to get email alerts whenever we uh, make a trade alert. You can also have a phone number added for text alerts. You can do alerts by things that get triggered in your analysis and scan tab. Uh, you can do it on order fills, any TOS announcement, any chat messages can be sent to a mobile device. So there's a lot you can do here for sure. Customize it as you see fit. It's pretty intuitive. There's a bunch of order defaults in here. Um, one of the ones I always tell people to change in options is make sure that your order default is always just one contract for options. You don't want to default to 10. I think some people have had some fat finger trades and made some 10 contract order entries, not meaning to do that. Uh, there's a bunch of hotkeys you can look at if you are not used to using a mouse and kind of clicking through. And then finally, you have a profile in here. So if you want to have a profile for the community and forum within Thinkorswim, I do not, but if you do, it would be in here as well. Okay, so we went through a lot of stuff here in just this first video, and I get it, it's probably a little bit overwhelming, but I wanted to give you the lay of the land and just give you an overview of all the different sections that we have inside of the Thinkorswim platform. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments or feedback at this point, let me know. If you love this video, if you're enjoying this so far, please let me know also, share this video online, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.